virtually online can we please go ahead and give the lord a big round of applause as we welcome them glory be to god it is thanksgiving service and we are really going to do a good job of thanking god who has helped us like i told us at the what night service to come together for seven straight days and praise god can only be by the grace of god and that God who had helped us, we must thank him more. If I clap you for him, go ahead and really clap for him. <laughs> we also want to thank the almighty God for as many of us who are celebrating birthday, particularly this week. <laughs> Bro, everybody's birthday is today. My birthday is today. I know in the family of Dele, Thomas, one of the children, is 1st of January. I can't remember which of them now. Come on, put your hands together for all of these great people. And to crown it all this year, God gave us a baby girl on the 1st of January. That's a good sign that there will be many, many babies in this church this year. Come on, give the Lord a big hand, shout hallelujah shout amen shout glory just shout unto the lord you're so excited about 2022 i have been even before the end of the year because truly this year there will be joyful harvest in the name of jesus so at the watch night service the lord has spoken to us on the message joyful harvest and this morning will be part two but with a subtitle the separators you see at the end of every year and the beginning of a, a new year you see government of nations you know they go to prisons and go to different places and then somebody who has been condemned to die the president will say all right i free this one this one this one somebody who's you know, in jail, life sentence, it's okay. Let's release this one and this one and this one. The president has the power. But our God is more powerful than any president. When he's going to separate those who will be alive at the end of this year and those who will not, he will show up on your behalf in that separation and say, you will be alive. You will be alive. You will be alive. I can't hear your loud amen. He will want to say, well, this year I want to raise millionaires. And he will show up in the group of the people. Say, you are one of them. You are one of them. You are one of them. Oh, let me hear a believing amen. So, joyful harvest, the separators. Our theme, as you know, for the month of January is free indeed free indeed the almighty god the advocate the judge himself will declare our freedom from every yoke every bondage in the name of jesus when he shows up and is pointing hands to those that will be free indeed you will be one in the name of jesus so our text as you can guess is john 8 verse 36 john 8 verse 36 if the son therefore shall make you free ye shall be free indeed the crossover service message titled joyful harvest is really a prophetic message that can be titled free indeed if you remember very well the text for what night service was from psalm 126 I read verses 5 and 6 to us then. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again, will rejoice him, bringing his sheaves with him. That was the test we took. But if you were to start that passage, Psalm 126 from verse 1, Psalm 126, 1, 2, 3. So when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, were like them that dream. There was our mouth filled with laughter. 
and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the brethren, the Lord had done great things for them. I thought God is talking to somebody here. Yeah. The Lord had done great things for us. We are rough, we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. When the Lord will show up this year, looking for who to set free from debt, from sorrow, from shame, from reproach, from sicknesses, from diseases, he will find you in the name of Jesus. The Lord has proposed to bring us to the season of joyful harvest, brethren, and take my word for it. And that will be by the power of redemption. Because that's our overall watchword for the year. And no force, no power, no scheming of men can stop that. You will have joyful harvest this year in the name of Jesus. And I share with us at the what night service, attempted to answer the question, what does the promise of joyful harvest represent? There might be one or two of us that, that, that might not have been here. He gave us seven points. I said, joyful harvest means that your waiting is over. Yeah. I had only two good amen now. Yeah. Say, so your waiting is over. Yeah. We have waited for that thing for too long. I now say the waiting is over. Yeah. The harvest is here. The waiting is over. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Number two, I said, harvest cancel labor laws and terminates barrenness. This year, you will not labor in vain. Lead to effort, outstanding blessings in the name of Jesus. Harvest brings an end to failure. You will never record a single failure this year in the name of Jesus. Harvest brings in supplies and provisions. Whatever is needed, the Almighty God will supply in abundance this year in the name of Jesus. You know, when I was saying, you will have no failure this year. I find some students in my front. None of them said amen to them. Well, I will not suffer any failure this year. In the name of Jesus. With harvest comes joy. You wake up in joy, you go to bed in joy. In the name of Jesus. See, when you say amen to prayer, you say I receive it. When you say nothing, you say I don't care. And if you don't care, then anything can happen. I said, you will wake up in joy and go to bed in joy. Joyful harvest eliminates sorrow and missed joy. This year, your joy will not be diluted with any sorrow. In the name of Jesus. And I told us that joyful harvest represents enduring, lasting, and unending blessing. Our harvest this year, our blessings this year will be enduring. It will be lasting and unending blessings in the name of Jesus. So we went that far at the watch night service. But there are separators between losers and winners at harvest. And we must take you know, close, close, close attention to these separators. In other words, what separates the winner and the loser? Let me tell you the old truth. Every year is good. And every year is bad. It depends on what side the year turns to you. I mean, the family that has a baby girl on the first day of January, what do you think? That's a good way to start. Can we give the Lord a bigger and one more time? Because every church that has a baby at the first, the first day of the year, ah, is a blessed church. Won't you clap for the Lord again? This year, you want to really, really appreciate God for everything. I am just so good. I'm just so, 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 so happy. I feel good that God has given us a sign. Whether you know it or not, there are places where the first day of the year somebody died. Oh, you don't think so? God has decided to give us a sign that is with us this year with a bouncing baby girl. And I'm saying, appreciate God for that. Give the Lord a really, really big hand. Hallelujah. So, depending on what side a particular year turns to an individual, it could be called a good year or a bad year. So, what separates 
the winners from the losers. Seven quick points. I will rush through them and then it will be time to pray. Number one, the mercy of God is a big separator between winners and losers in bringing to pass a joyful harvest. May you not run out of God's mercy this year. In the name of Jesus. I want to bring attention to Amos 4, verse 7. Amos 4, verse 7. And it would be nice if you can read it with me, uh, uh, if you don't mind. Let, let's read it together, very slowly. One, two, go. And also, have we tell the rain from you, say God forbid, when there were yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the piece upon which it rained not withered. God said, I'm God. I made the rain to fall on one city. He didn't give the reason. I made the rain not to fall on another city. And that city where there is no rain, everything wither. So in the same year that some are having joyful harvest, some other places talked about withering. Ah, this year you will not wither. Your family will not wither. In the mighty name of Jesus. That is mercy at work, brethren. At the appointed time, the mercy of God kicks in the harvest and kicks out judgment. I mean, each time I've studied 2 Kings 7, 1 and 2. 2 Kings 7, 1 and 2. There was famine in the land. And Elisha came on the scene. Women are already eating their children. Elisha came on the scene and said, by this time tomorrow, there will be abundance at the gate of Samaria. The Bible tells us there was the officer of the king who said, even if God were to open the windows of heaven, can this thing ever happen? That was all he said. Elisha said, you will see it. You will not eat thereof. And this man died when the harvest came. I'm praying for you one more time. The ground will not swallow you this year. You will be partakers of joyful harvest in the name of Jesus. But the same Elisha, if you read 2 Kings 4, 16 and 17, 2 Kings 4, 16 and 17, a woman called the Shunammite woman, she was barren, had no child, has been good to the man of God. And in verse 16, the man, 15, the man of God has said to her, you are going to have a child. Listen to what this woman said. And he said about this season according to the time of life, Thou shalt embrace a son. That was Elisha speaking to her. And she said, No, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. In other words, Elisha, you are a liar. This woman was more offensive than what the officer said. The officer only said, If you open the window, if God opened the window of heaven, can this thing ever happen? And Elisha said, You will see it, or you won't eat the arrow. But this woman said, Man of God, you are a liar. Don't lie to me. I mean, you can call a man of God any name. If you call a man of God a liar, that's very, very, you're pushing too hard. But you know what? By mercy, Elisha pretended as though she didn't hear what the woman said. May the Lord show you mercy this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because in verse 17, the Bible says, and the woman conceived in spite of calling the man of God a liar. The woman conceived and bore a son at that same season that Elisha had said unto her, according, according to the time of life. See mercy at play. One said, will this thing ever happen? Say, well, you will see it. You will not eat thereof. One said, man of God, you are a liar. Say, well, I don't care what you call me. You will get it. I pray one more time. Mercy will separate you unto blessing this year. In the name of Jesus. So the mercy of God is a big separator between winners and losers. In bringing to pass a joyful harvest. Psalms 102 verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor a year, the appointed time is come. The mess becomes a message. As mercy kicks out judgment and kicks in the harvest. I've told you before. There was a move in my life. That was a destiny def defining move. And that was when I moved from a city called Lagos in Nigeria to Port Harcourt. I did not apply for the job. They needed somebody who's 
as a, a mechanical, an engineering degree, I know he's an accountant, right? Kind of fitted into that, but I was in the discussion. One of my friends that we grew up together was this, oh, I know one of my friends, he will do a good job here. They invited me for the interview. And because I thought things were okay, I mean, I did a good job in the bank, even though the job couldn't get me a car. Um, you know how you are, the, the worst enemy of better is good. Many hold tight to good that better can come to them. I was holding to good in a banking job. They gave me a destiny-defining moment. I was very arrogant. I told the guy, you really want me? He said, yes. Okay. Um, my profit sharing in the bank. If I were to join you in September, they, I will lose it. The man said, how much was he last year? I told him arrogantly, as if to say, who will give you that? The man said, what if I double it? So oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I said, okay, one more thing. I just paid my rent in Lagos. Now you're moving me to Polacol. Landlord don't refund rent. So how much was your rent? I told him, say, what if I double it? Now, Father and the Lord said this year is the year of double, double. Yeah. Your blessings will come, double, double, double. Yeah. Everything I messed up arrogantly with demand, just double. By the time he doubled everything, the money had become even without, without resuming yet. And the man said, you know what? I really like your arrogance. What I like about you is you are very arrogant. I mean, I don't see how anybody likes arrogance. But your mess will become a message. Yeah. You know the rest of the story? I got the job. I resumed. That's where I became a, a, a minister. That's where I met Pastor Iguna. That's where, where I met the King K. That's where I met, I mean, that's, that's how King's Palace story. That's why you are even here today. Come on, go ahead and give the Lord a really big hand of praise. When mercy is at play, what looks like a mess becomes a message. The court of appeal may set a man free. But the Supreme Court will overrule the appeal court and sentence the man. Now, Supreme Court may set a man free, but the man is not free until Christ sets him free. Because Christ is the ultimate judge, and no one appeals his judgment. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free. Indeed, this year the Lord has decided to set us free, to make us free. And we are going to be free truly in the mighty name of Jesus. So the mercy of God is crucial in the events of life. It is the separator between life and death, between harvest and famine, between joy and sorrow. There was one man, a terrible womanizer, extremely bad drunkard, you know, smokes like chimney, he's terrible, you know, the, the waste. In fact, one of the days they were going to go on one of their exploits in the world. He carried women and four of his other friends. We were going somewhere to mess around with women, to drink alcohol and smoke. Suddenly his phone rang, and it was the mom. The mom said, where are you? Please come, 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 come. I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. And he loved the mom. Like, if there's anything good about him, that was it. He said, guys, my mom just called. You go. I will see my mom, and I will join you. On their way, there was a terrible motor accident. All his friends and the girlfriend, they all died. He got to the mother. The mother wasn't even sick. But mercy of God, we always separate from life and death. You know, sorrow and joy. May the mercy of God work for you this year. Yeah. Can I hear a very loud amen? Yeah. But riding on that first point is the second point. God's mercy is a product of the law of sowing and reaping. God's mercy is a product of the law of sowing and reaping. Matthew 5 verse 7, Matthew 5 verse 7, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. In other words, when you sow mercy, you reap mercy. Listen to me. You don't expect a joyful harvest when you sow a sorrowful seed. No, it's not possible. Galatians 6, 7. Says, be not deceived, Galatians 6, 7, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. 
Watch the kind of seed you sow this year. Don't sow sorrow. You get to a place, everybody is sad. You know, there's someone that I was talking to the other time. I said, ah, you want me to tell you the whole truth? Well, she has some marital issues. And I said, can you change your disposition where you appear, you feel like gloomy and sorrowful and sad? If in the house, this is how you appear, it's difficult for the house to be, to, to, to have some brightness and joy. You know what she told me? She said, oh, that's how we are in my family. Some people just appear, you think somebody has just died. And then some people appear, like Brother Michael Jayola. <laughs> Even when there's no money in his pocket, and he's hungry or something is going on, or the choir director has just given him some pressure, he's just bubbling with joy. And, and then he just said, oh, my, my brother, what's going on? Come on, give the Lord a really big hand for those who can rejoice. Or you get to a pastor good now who will show up in a bank. And even though mortgage is coming and he's wondering what is going to happen. And they call him, why are you so happy? Joseph appeared in the prison, saw the baker and the buckler. So why are you guys, why is your countenance down like this? You know, the first day Pastor IT entered this place, I said, there is no way. God is not partial. God is not partial. My, my wife and myself, we will carry our own child as well. Because for 25 years, she was waiting. And in her story, even for one year, she was on which she couldn't get up. She had, you know, terrible incident that crippled her for one year. And this woman coming to a church for the first time didn't know Anybody, I've not even met her before. She was dancing like a crazy woman. I said, what? Look. I said, look, I, I've been crazy for God before, but now I've seen somebody crazier than I. I need to take my craziness to the next level. Come on, give the Lord a really big... How many people are going to be crazy for Jesus this year? <laughs> Beloved brethren, don't sow sorrow. When you get to a place, let your joy bring joy to others. It lets your joy bring hope to others and say, if God can help this fellow, if God can do it for this fellow, God can do it for me. But you see a Christian showing up, say, ah, this Christianity is not working. <laughs> it's working, only this fellow is sowing the wrong seed. Raise your right hand and say, my joy comment. <laughs> Number three, riding on the first two points, you cannot expect a joyful harvest when you build your sorrow on another person's, uh, your joy on another person's sorrow. The joy you are receiving is being built on somebody's sorrow. And I will give you one simple illustration. Someone many years ago, uh, they were, you know, took advantage of a marital problem between a colleague, male, and the wife. You know, their office opposite one another. The brother was not sensitive. And because there was a problem between himself and the wife, this other lady began to be nice. And she's generally nice and a go getter kind of a lady. Long story short, I suddenly heard that they were going to get married. Ah. So I went to her. You are a Christian. This fellow is a Christian. I know there's a marital problem in his house. But why are you taking advantage of that? You know what she told me? She said, uh, Vashti misbehaved. And the king fired Vashti and married Esther, and God wasn't angry. So, so you are Esther, she's Vashti. I said, lady, don't build your joy on somebody's sorrow. I will leave the story there because... Um, the joy at some, at some point was exhausted. Let's leave that one. But be sure that your joy is not built on somebody's sorrow. Number four, there is no harvest without a sowing. Anna sowed the seed of Samuel to receive five more children. You know the story. In 1 Samuel 2 verse 20, 1 Samuel 2 verse 20, and Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, 
the Lord give this seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went unto their own home, verse 21, and the Lord visited Anna so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. Gave one Samuel to serve the Lord and got five for that children. Don't let anybody deceive you. You are not going to sow. You are not going to reap. It's as simple as that. It's the law of harvest. Peter sowed his boat and harvest a net breaking boat sinking blessing in a joyful harvest. You can read the story in Luke 5. Luke 5 verse 3. Luke 5 verse 3. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, his owner, the owner of the boat, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the, the crowds from there. Jesus used the boat of Peter to preach. Peter was tired. Peter could have been, oh, sir, I'm going home. We've been here all night. You want to use my boat? I'm sorry. We are tired. Next time. Be careful before you give excuses this year. Some places say, oh, it's second. It's too close to what night service. No, we are not going to have Sunday service. Or let's have virtual service. The people will be tired. Be careful. Don't excuse any opportunity to serve God. Service in Christ doesn't kill anyone. It's the Lord who supplies the grace. Anyway, what are you going to sow this year? Well, you sow nothing, you reap nothing. And when we talk about sowing, it's not just about money. Oh, I want to thank the Almighty God for members of this church. Many of them, I was, look, I, I was looking at the report of media, how many hours some of the volunteers did. One young girl did 90 hours. Was scheduled to do 84. I don't even know how you schedule one person to do 84. But after doing 84, she then had six unscheduled hours. Tell me how God will not bless that person. And Pastor Haiti is here. But imagine my wife was greeting her. She said, thank you for the sacrifice. She doesn't understand. My wife said, ah, coming from Nigeria at this time, she's a pastor's wife. You know, that, that is, is a huge sacrifice. How much honorarium can we give her to get somebody to be here, if not for the love of Christ that has brought us together? Please help me celebrate this great woman of God. <laughs> all the other guests are all gone, but she's still here. I'm sure you can give the Lord a big hand more. And she's not here by herself alone. She came with lovely. The, 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 the young girl that brought joy for the first time. The young girl who brought the set of twins after she had arrived. To now make her mother of one, two, three. Come on, give the Lord a really big hand of praise. What are you going to sow? It's not all about money. The duty managers here, young and old. I was looking at how the people put in. Many of them young people. Number six, the harvest reflects the seed. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6. But this I say, he which sweat sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which sweat bountifully shall reap also bountifully. That's the way it works. You say, well, I'm sowing. Ah, I'm trying my best. That's okay. But God pays attention to what people give. You know that woman, that widow, she gave, when you say, I gave my widow's might, you don't understand the Bible. The widow's might is everything. That's everything the woman had. So when you say you give your widow's might, don't think it's one small thing. No. Widow's might is everything. So if you have not given everything, you have not given your widow's might. Give as you have been prospered. That's what it is. One of the guests that came, I'm not sure. I think I was with him alone. I don't know why. Maybe Brother Tunde was with me. We took him out and was sharing with us that they were going to get into a big, big project. And God laid in his heart that somebody just gave him brand new Jeep. They've not even used it for a little while. And he was making a call for people to support and people are not coming. Just told the wife, we're going to sell this. He sold the car. And then the Lord opened the heavens. Why won't God prosper him? And this is not to boast at all. It's to challenge you in the new year. When we're having this this project, 
my wife whispered to me that God just told me that is that our investment house that we should sell it and bring the money to church? I said, the devil can't tell you that. Shortly after, the Lord confirmed the same thing. And we are saying, well, if the money comes, you know, this and I said, honey, you know what? Don't let us get this money into our account. If you come to our account, we don't know. Let's just tell the church right away that the person who is going to buy the house should transfer the money directly. So if it comes, the crumbs, the crumbs can be in our account, even if it's one dollar. Let's get everything going. Beloved brethren, there is no gimmick anywhere. You sow nothing, you reap nothing. Don't let anybody. And when you are reaping, it's not just only in money. Good health, long life, joy, peace, miracle, signs, wonder, even eternal life. I need to close because people don't like when you say that. But I must not fail in my duty to tell you the whole truth. Oh, I've not been saying, saying but I have money. But how, many, how much of it have you spent on some very terrible thing that shouldn't have happened? Say, thank God I have money. You should have said, thank God this never happened. I've told you before, a man who went to visit the son in Canada, may that never be the portion of anybody here in the mighty name of Jesus. He was wealthy, but he arrived there just a little headache. They, you know, went to the hospital. And then when they would check her, she had brain tumor. Within a short window of time, you know, he has incurred a bill of about $600,000 uh, $600, or something like that. Uh, Pastor Ebenezer Age was sharing with us somebody that had COVID complications. I can't remember how much, some very serious amount of money, maybe in the millions of dollars. Even if the man is wealthy, why must you spend millions of your money for, for, for doctors? God takes care of us when we take care of his business. But by the grace of God, God has raised men and women in this church supporting this work on, with understanding that this is the work of my father. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be part of it. On behalf of those people, regular titers, those who give seed, those who support, children's trip they will support, the toy distribution they will support. Now every, can you give the Lord a big hand for them? The Almighty God will surprise you more than you can ever imagine this year in the name of Jesus because it's the season of joyful harvest. Number six, Thanksgiving makes joy to be full. Thanksgiving makes joy to be full. In, in Luke 17, if you begin to read from verse 11, you will find out there that 10 lepers were healed by Jesus. They came to him, they asked for mercy, have mercy. And just said, go and go to and show yourself to the priest. And they went and they are cleansed. You know the story. In verse 17, Luke 17, verse 17. And Jesus answered and said, Were well, there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine that are not found that return to give glory to God? Save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith had made thee all. The nine lepers received joy when they were healed. The one leper with thanksgiving was joyful, is joyful. In the first service, um, a sermon was discharged and acquitted. And I told them that the nine lepers were discharged from leprosy. But is that only one person acquitted? See, discharge means you are set free, but you can be taken back again. But when you are discharged and you are acquitted, they can never rearrest you for the same issue. The sickness that God heals in your life will never come back in the name of Jesus. The affliction that comes around you will never come back in the name of Jesus. So who came back was acquitted. He was made whole. By mercy, you receive joy. With thanksgiving, your joy is full. The shout of praise breaks up the hard grounds, pulls down walls of opposition, and the ground begins to yield an increase when we offer thanksgiving. In conclusion this morning, holiness is a separator, just as sin is a separator. <laughs> Brethren, this year, don't let us mess with sin. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save. Neither is ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Sin separates from God, brethren. 
Secret sin is an invitation to devourer to waste the harvest. And so secret sins must be brought to the open. I told them in the first service, it was a different sermon, but the conclusion was the same. That the snake and the snail, they met in the jungle. And the snake said to the snail, I will kill you, you are dead today. The snail said, I know you have power to kill me, but please take me to the open. So if you kill me in the open, I will have a decent barrier. The snake said, I don't care where you go. You are die we're going to die today. So okay, let's go to the open. They got to the open. Woman being saw snail and snake. Can you get what they did? Say it very loud. They killed the snake. And the snail went free. The devil is the snake. He likes to keep you in the dark. Tell him, I'm bringing you to the open. I told them also of a young girl who broke the mother's dishes and plates at home. And then the housemaid saw her say, I will tell mommy, say, please don't tell mommy. Say, in that wise, I take your breakfast every morning. And the girl said, that's fine. From that day, the girl wasn't having breakfast again. She was growing lean. The mother would say, what's wrong with you? You are growing lean. Say, mommy, I'm fine. When she was dying of hunger, she went to mommy. So sometimes they go, I broke your plate. Since that day, I had no breakfast. Narrated the story. I said, come on, why will you do that? The following day, the maid came. Said, where is my breakfast? Said, no, I'm not giving you. So I'm, I will report you to mommy today. Say, go and report to mommy. Why? Because whenever sin is in the open, the devil can torment you again. So, righteousness separates you from evil and brings you to blessing. Hebrews 1.9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, had anointed thee with oil of gladness above thy fellows. In summary, there are separators between losers and winners at harvest. That must be noted clearly. I gave you seven. The mercy of God is a big separator between winners and losers in bringing to pass a joyful harvest. Two, God's mercy is a product of the law of sowing and reaping. Three, you cannot expect joyful harvest when you build your joy on another person's sorrow. Four, there is no harvest without a sowing. Five, the harvest reflects the seed. Thanksgiving makes joy to be full. Holiness is a separator. Just as sin is a separator. Can we rise? The perfect work of redemption is available for us to access the enduring, lasting, and unending harvest. That's why our watchword for 2022 is redemption. And I want you to please call on the Almighty God. If there's any sin that you must confess, tell him. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Oh, I'm no longer hiding in the dark with the, with the serpent. I bring everything to the open. Save my soul. If you're out there in the virtual church, ask the Almighty God for mercy. Oh, he's merciful. He's merciful. Ask him to show you mercy. Just talk to him. If you have not given your life to Christ at all, it won't be a bad idea if you raise your hand so we know where you are. And then we can then continue to reach out to you because the ushers will sneak a paper in your hand. If you want to, if you are taking that decision, just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner, save my soul. I know the, the, the work of redemption has brought salvation to me. I accept that free salvation this morning by giving my life to you. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my, in my heart that you are the savior of mankind. Please save my soul. If you pray that prayer point, then you are born again. It's as simple as that. I want you to reach out to us in the numbers that you will see on your screen. The rest of us, let's pray this one prayer and say, Father, separate me for joyful harvest by the power of redemption in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. My Lord and my God, let the power of redemption separate me. For joyful harvest in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father and my God, I want to thank you for your word. I pray that by the power of redemption, every one of us, you will separate us this year unto joyful harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, your mercy will speak for us in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Your favor will single us out in the mighty name of Jesus. Every error that we will commit that will make us forfeit our harvest. May we never make such an error in the name of Jesus. Let it be well with every one of us. Those who have just given their life to you, save their souls to the very, very end. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now you go ahead and give the Lord a really big clap offering.